Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. In front of me I have a Voron 0.1. To be precise, V0.751. And if you're not familiar with that, that is okay. I will explain. At this point I also want to give a big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They make super high quality PCBs at a very affordable price and have their fourth PCB design contest going on. You can design your own PCB, submit it there and win one of many amazing prizes. So no matter your experience level in PCB design, if you're interested at all, make sure to go check out PCBWay.com to find out more. This is not like any other 3D printer that you can just uh, go ahead and order online. Instead, Voron is a design group uh, of just engineers that uh, really love 3D printing and design 3D printers in their spare time. They do not sell Vorons. They don't even sell Voron kits. Uh, but thanks to uh, them becoming very, very popular in the recent times, there are uh, quite a few uh, resellers uh, online that do sell kits. And that is something that Voron Design also says. You can go ahead, you can sell kits, you can sell finished printers, you can sell whatever you want. Uh, they don't care. So now you can also go ahead and buy a kit. But even then it is not like assembling a Prusa machine. Since you still need to 3D print all the parts yourself and you need to do all the wiring and all the uh, firmware configuration as well. But you might think open source project, well, uh, that's nice and good. I bet, bet the documentation is horrible and it's, uh, it's a pain to get anything working. Well, let me tell you, the documentation for this thing is absolutely fantastic. The manual for this printer, although it is a DIY printer created by people that do not get paid for it, is one of the best uh, manuals I've ever used in my life. Uh, the only one that uh, comes close is the one from Prusa uh, for assembling uh, their kit printers. Alright, so we've established that this is more of a DIY 3D printer than an off-the-shelf kit. Now, I did go ahead and use uh, the kit that ForumBot on AliExpress uh, is providing, uh, as it is just a lot cheaper to order it in a kit instead of sorting all the individual components, uh, which Voron Design does provide a sourcing guide with links to all the components that they recommend, uh, but it is a lot easier and cheaper uh, to just uh, get a kit. But of course, there are some downsides, as in a kit, you don't uh, have a hand in choosing the exact components and something might not be as high quality as you might want. Then after you've ordered all the parts or uh, ordered a kit, you need to print all the different parts that are required to build this machine. Now, since this is a fully enclosed uh, printer that does get quite warm, they need to be printed in ABS. ASA or ABS Plus is also fine, but don't try anything else. There's a lot of stories of people uh, trying to use nylon or trying to use PEG or any other filament and most of them ended up just uh, having to reprint it in ABS and rebuild their whole printer. One of the requirements for uh, building a Voron is kind of having a printer that is capable of printing ABS. Now with some tuning, most printers are able. Even something like an Ender 3 uh, can be tricked into printing ABS uh, and on my Prusa Mark 3 I had really no big problems whatsoever. But if you don't have a 3D printer yet, or you just can't uh, get ABS to work, there are programs, uh, they're called the Printed Forward program, where other Voron users uh, print uh, the, all the parts required uh, to build your Voron uh, on one of their machines. And uh, it's actually quite affordable. The only downside is that there is quite a long waiting list. Now we've also seen uh, quite a few printed kits on AliExpress, but there you're really rolling the dice about the quality, if they're really printed with the correct settings, what material was actually used, so uh, proceed with caution on those ones. Overall I've used about a kilogram of uh, material here, uh, so it's not actually all that bad. I printed it over the course of like a couple of weeks just whenever I had uh, time. The files uh, come marked as standard color and accent color pieces. So uh, the gray parts that you can see here are the accent colors, while uh, the black is kind of the standard color. I did go ahead and invert the hot end since I didn't want the big grey hot end uh, and instead I have it black, uh, but uh, you can do that uh, however you like. So further customization uh, that I did is, uh, if you have seen a recent video of mine where I used the Nash Master uh, 2S, uh, I engraved uh, my logo and the Voron logo on the bottom plate uh, inside of the printer enclosure and also on the back panel. And this just kind of gives it some more uh, personality and I needed a test object for that other video. 
Then after printing everything and getting your kit, uh, the next step is assembling. And uh, there is a very detailed manual and uh, if for some reason uh, something is not uh, working uh, how it should be, if there's a nut missing somewhere, it's not because the manual didn't tell you, it's just because we, you did not read all the fine print. There is a lot of fine print and a lot of steps and it is very easy to miss uh, inserting a nut somewhere as it is not important for that step. But uh, 20 pages later, uh, three hours of building later, uh, all of a sudden you need that notch and you cannot insert it anymore. So you have to uh, disassemble a whole bunch. So you need to be super careful to read every little detail of the manual and uh, double check, triple check uh, your work. Uh, so that way you don't have any uh, big oopsies. I only had really one mistake uh, where I forgot to uh, fasten the drag chain of the z-axis onto one of the parts uh, before uh, screwing that into other parts but I was kind of able to uh, just bolt it on from the other side and it uh, still worked uh, so that was not a big deal. Now assembly is not a quick thing. Uh, if you've assembled an N3 or any other uh, printer that you just gonna put a couple screws in and you're golden, this is not that. I spent uh, probably about 10 to 15 hours uh, in total on uh, the assembly of this machine, which is uh, very reasonable. I have some uh, 3D printer building experience, uh, but not really on the like this uh, kind of scale. So I took my time, make sure that everything is nice and neat. There are no steps that are really super difficult or challenging. As long as you're able to follow a manual, you should be able to print this machine. It just requires a lot of patience and uh, careful reading. When it comes to the electronics, uh, this machine is running Clipper, which is a different kind of firmware where instead of having just one controller board like you would have on like your N3 or C10s or whatever, uh, that does all the calculations uh, that you just put an SD card in, Clipper has a Raspberry Pi where the main install of Clipper runs on. That's where it does all the heavy lifting uh, calculations and all the path planning and then the controller board uh, for the stepper motors itself just handles the simple uh, step signals uh, for the stepper motors. What this allows you is to have a huge feature set that would just be too calculation intensive for a regular controller board. Uh, you can do fancy things like uh, input shaper which basically cancels out ringing in your prints uh, by uh, doing the opposite movement. Now this uh, required quite a bit of setup and I have not done that yet uh, but even out of the box, the prints are beautiful. The way you control a Clipper is through a web interface and there are a couple of different options. You can either use Octoprint uh, as, with, as you can use with any other uh, 3D printer or you can use one of the two dedicated uh, interfaces, uh, Mainsail or Fluid. They are very similar and I just settled on Fluid because that's the first one uh, that uh, I clicked on, uh, but Mainsail would work just as well. Setting this stuff up is quite a few steps again. Uh, you first need to uh, fl flash uh, the clipper onto the Raspberry Pi uh, SD card. Then you need to uh, boot that up and uh, get some stuff off of that. And you need to SSH into that and compile the firmware uh, for your controller board. And then you need to upload that to the controller board. Uh, but all of these steps are also very detailed and you basically just have to copy paste uh, commands and uh, everything works perfectly fine. So it doesn't require any uh, fancy knowledge. It just is quite a few steps and a couple of programs that you need to use. Then after that, uh, you can go into your web interface and uh, control your printer. One of the convenient things about uh, Clipper is uh, that through the web interface you can also access the configuration file. So changing any firmware parameters does not require you to uh, recompile firmware as it would be with Marlon. So uh, you can very easily on the fly uh, go ahead and uh, change uh, many settings and really uh, tune this printer very finely. But even out of the box, uh, without any tuning, I was absolutely blown away by this printer's performance. The hotend that I'm using is a uh, Patheos uh, Dragon High Flow hotend, and I'm not quite sure if High Flow was the right decision yet. Uh, I, since it is a very small machine, the standard flow will probably also be fine. But I want to print fast, and I mean really fast, so I wanted to have the extra flow rate that the High Flow gives me. 
One thing that is a problem with the high flow is that there is uh, quite a bit of uh, stringing and uh, retractions don't really fix that, uh, but there are some other settings that you can change, like pressure advance, which is a setting that uh, basically manages the filament uh, pressure in the hot end, and there's a couple of settings that you can tune there uh, to, uh, for one, reduce stringing and also uh, reduce any bulges that you might get in the corners of a badly tuned 3D printer. After tuning that and changing some other slicer settings, I was able to get uh, basically perfectly string-free prints. However, a uh, new issue started uh, popping up, and that is that first, one of my uh, uh, part cooling fans just stopped spinning, while the other one was still spinning perfectly. I didn't notice that at first, because they kind of hit on the side, and I was like, why is there all of a sudden so much curling on this benchy? and it ended up actually being uh, ripped off of the platform because it curled up too much and tell the notice that well one of the power cooling fans is not there anymore so there's not enough cooling and then uh, not much later uh, the second one also bit the dust so that is one of the problems that you can have with a kit that just some components might not be the highest quality now we've used Sunon uh, fans before but which is what they are and didn't have any problems but uh, the Recommended fans that Warren Design has in their uh, list uh, are of a different brand, so I went ahead and ordered these. Uh, they of course haven't arrived yet, but I will be replacing that. So I guess uh, for now I will be mostly printing ABS. And printing ABS and nylon and any other like high temp uh, materials is really what this machine is made for, uh, since uh, there the enclosure really shines. For PLA, I actually have the door open and the uh, top removed, uh, as otherwise uh, cooling it would be just impossible. And I can almost not believe that I've gone this far in a Boron uh, video and have not mentioned speed. Speed is the main reason uh, why anyone builds a Boron and why I built a Boron as well. These things are really fast. Part of that is because they are using a Core XY system, uh, which basically means that the printhead moves in X and Y direction, uh, which means there's no heavy bed that needs to be uh, moved back and forth. And the belts are uh, kind of uh, tied up in a way that both of the motors are actually in the back of the machine and do not move. Uh, only the printhead itself on a very small uh, gantry moves back and forth, uh, which means that there is very low mass and therefore you can use very high accelerations. Also, these Voron printers are designed very well. You can really tell that uh, they have a lot of experience building 3D printers and all the parts are rigorously tested. It starts at the little things about like all the kind of uh, fits together and uh, all the hardware just drops in, the parts fit together, and uh, but there is also not too much slop. Uh, it is very tightly tolerant all around, uh, like, like the axis of where it moves goes till, all the way till the end. There's like half a millimeter left in the end, uh, so you can really utilize all the space that is available. So for me, the kind of quality setting uh, speed of this, uh, where I just kind of take it slow and uh, make sure that everything is printed nicely, is about the highest I can achieve uh, at all the usable uh, on my Prusa, which is already a fairly fast machine. Compared to something like an Ender 3 or like a Sidewinder or any of uh, these other cheaper uh, 3D printers, the kind of quality speed of this is probably about twice as fast as the speed uh, preset on those machines. And well, if you ever want to see something really crazy that blows your mind, uh, Google Voron Speedboat Race and you will see some printers that go so fast, you will not believe that it is not time-lapsed. Now that requires careful tuning, and I will certainly try that as well on my machine, but some people have managed to uh, print a 3D Benchy, which on uh, like a industry style machine takes around two hours, or on a Prusa, maybe an hour and a half. Uh, they've managed to print uh, that in under five minutes on uh, one of these style machines. And that is just mind-blowing. And all of that while using a direct drive system. So we are getting to the end of this video. Now, this is not the last time you will see this machine on this channel. I'm going to continue tweaking it, uh, replace some parts, do some upgrades, uh, and uh, uh, configure things like uh, the input shaping, and then I will make a second video where I show off all of these upgrades and the more tuning, and really show you what you can get out of this machine. So I guess that would be a perfect time for you to subscribe if you haven't already, so you don't miss that future video. 
I will also add links down below uh, to Voron Design, of course, since they uh, gr so graciously designed these awesome machines uh, completely free of charge. Uh, I also have a link to the kit down below uh, that I used. Uh, this is an affiliate link. Uh, so if you buy through it, uh, you get a small kickback, uh, but it doesn't cost you any extra. With that said, thank you guys for watching and until next time.